This video will begin our lecture series on muscle tissue. We'll start this series talking about skeletal muscle tissue, but before we get into the details, let's talk about the characteristics of muscle tissue. Muscle tissue is excitable. This means that you can stimulate a muscle cell and it will respond. After you stimulate your muscle cell, an action potential or an electric signal is going to run through the entire cell and we call this characteristic conductibility. So our action potential is going to run through our cell membrane of our muscle cell and this will lead to contraction. So one of the characteristics of muscle tissue is contractibility. But our muscles don't only shorten, they're also capable of being stretched out and we call that characteristic extensibility. And lucky for us, they don't stay extended and they will return to their normal resting length and this characteristic is called elasticity. So those are our unifying characteristics of muscle tissue. And I've got a few more things to say. Muscle tissue is very highly cellular. So unlike connective tissue, all we're going to see when we look at muscle tissue are cells. And then all of our muscle tissue is also highly vascular, meaning that we have very good blood supply leading to all of our muscle tissue. So now let's take a look at skeletal muscle tissue, which are these sections of our patchwork quilt that we have for a picture. When we look at skeletal muscle tissue, it's really going to depend on the slide that you have, but you may see this white space in between our cells, and you may not see the white space in between our cells. So if we go back to our previous picture and take a look, you can see there's not a lot of white space in between the cells, but there is a little bit. So we do have a little bit of white space running in between our cells, but not as much as we had in the next picture. So I wouldn't say that that white space is a general characteristic that you see in all slides, but be aware that it may be there in some. When you think of skeletal muscle tissue, you should think striations. What are striations? The word striated means striped. So in our skeletal muscle cells, you see these stripes running perpendicular to the length of the cell. So our cells are almost like zebras with their stripes. You should also notice that our cells are very long and straight. So our cells do not branch and they are very, very long. They run the entire length of the entire muscle. So if you think about your hamstrings, they run from your hips clear down to the back of your knees. Those are some long cells. Because the cells are so long, they are multinucleated. So we can see many nuclei pushed out to the cell membrane of our cells. So they appear typically on the edges of the cell. So those are some characteristics that we can see when we look at our skeletal muscle cells, but we also need to keep in mind that skeletal muscle works voluntarily, meaning that it can move when you want it to, or when you say, hey, I'm gonna raise my hand and scratch my cheek. You have used skeletal muscle. 
So the word voluntary means that it is under conscious control. That's a great general description for our skeletal muscle. Let's take a closer look. When we give locations of skeletal muscle, I want you to treat this a little bit like we treated bone and give me examples of skeletal muscle organs. A skeletal muscle organ is a muscle group. So if you think about your deltoid, that is a skeletal muscle organ, or your biceps brachii. And you have to give me both words because you have multiple biceps in your body. You've got a biceps brachii and you have a biceps femoris. Don't give me shortened names for your muscles so you can't tell me your abs. Instead of saying your abs, the correct term would be your rectus abdominis. So just like bones, I want you to pick your favorite muscle and use that as a location. Functions of skeletal muscle are a little bit more varied than you may suppose. Yes, our skeletal muscle is going to uh, function in voluntary movement, but skeletal muscle also functions in heat production. So if you're cold, you shiver, and the contraction of your muscles is going to produce heat. Our muscles also support soft tissue. They guard the entrances and exits of our body. Think about the muscles that close your eyes and mouth, that kind of thing. And finally, muscles do help to store some nutrients, like glycogen. So that sums up the details of our skeletal muscle. So we have our nice summary slide with all of that information. Or we can look at a different slide. This slide is in a different orientation. Our skeletal muscle cells are moving vertically, which means that you can see our striations running horizontally, perpendicular to the orientation of the muscle cell fiber. You can also see our nuclei squashed off to the side, but we've got many nuclei in one cell. And all of these cells are very long and straight and unbranching. Here is one more view. Again, you can see that our cells are very long and straight. You can see our striations and all of our many, many nuclei for one cell. So if you have any questions about muscle tissue or anything else, never hesitate to contact your instructor.